in my case, I'm going to give you an introduction, a brief introduction to uh, the World Income Inequality Database that we hold here at uh, WIDER. I thought that in a conference that is showcasing the research topics of, in which WIDER was involved or engaged during the last 10 years, would not be complete without a reference to one of the databases or one of the uh, tools uh, we have in WIDER that has been uh, lasting for uh, a longer time. So uh, maybe some people are familiar already with this database and maybe some people are not. So I want to emphasize on a few characteristics and, and, and the purpose of this uh, database. In general, in wider, a part of producing research, we are or disseminating the results of that research. We are also interested in contributing to the research community and policymakers and, in general, people interested in development economics with data sets or databases that could be uh, very useful and will be accessible. Uh, there are some databases on social assistance, on uh, government revenue, and this is about. Uh, inequality across countries. So, uh, as you know, there is a big concern, a big increasing concern on income inequality all over the world. Uh, this occurs at the global level, like we've seen in the previous presentations, what is going on with inequality in the world is increasing or decreasing. At regional level, so Interest in, interest in what's happening in Latin American countries, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Asia, or at the country level, uh, to know the different patterns in terms of inequality. But this always, face, uh, always faces the lack of adequate data. So the big problem in uh, analyzing, especially when it comes to global inequality or cross-country uh, comparisons, uh, the main problem we always face is the problem with data limitation. So uh, behind any graph that you see about global inequality, for example, there is a lot of work done to compile information for many countries that usually is very often is not fully comparable to imputing what happens with countries that there are, for which there are no, no information, etc. This is especially important for developing countries. So in economic development, we are interested in, the, in, in low income countries and this is where uh, the lack of data will be uh, uh, more important, especially in MENA countries or in Sub-Saharan Africa. Also when it comes to compare long-term series, so because of the lack of data or the lack of comparability due to changes in methodologies in um, uh, sampling methods, etc., in uh, some uh, in what surveys are used to compute inequality, and also when we want to make comparisons across countries. In some countries use income as the main well-being indicator. Some countries they tend to use uh, consumption, and even when we talk about income, there are many different ways of defining income, and they are not comparable always. So limited information dispersed across many sources. If one wants to know. Uh, uh, inequality in all countries in the world has to consult with many sources and not always easily accessible mm -hmm. and as I mentioned with severe comparability issues. So uh, in 1981, Dining and Square compiled a database for the World Bank and some assertion that is in, in the paper I think is still uh, quite relevant now. So this idea that empirical work using cross-country data, the lack of time is serious, especially for at the hot topic at that time, that was the relationship between economic growth and inequality, faced this problem of uh, lack of data, problems with the quality of data several, uh, I mean many times, that make comparability between countries uh, very difficult, or even in the same country, uh, if we want to analyze over time. I think this many years after this paper was published is still uh, unfortunately true. Even the, now the range of topics for which we want this data is probably much wider than it was at that time. So following this Deinegger and Squire compilation of uh, inequality genes uh, or pop uh, population uh, income or consumption shares for many countries, uh, 
it was constructed this database, World Income Inequality uh, Database, WEED, uh, and that was held here at Wider. So this is a database with basically cross-country information for income inequality. It's a store in a organized and user-friendly manner, so it's basically an Excel, Excel file or a data uh, data uh, file. And that is quite accessible, so that you can just download from the web or use uh, uh, using some of the um, graphic tools available in the website. It is part of the current World Inequality Project in our uh, wider program that is finishing this year, but it has been an essential element in many different work programs. So it was compiled initially in 1997 and 1999 with uh, being Andrea Cornia being uh, director of WIDER, but it survived the different work programs. It survived Tony Shorrock's uh, terms, uh, Finn Tarf's term, and hopefully it will survive the next term with uh, Kunal Sen. Uh, the data was updated uh, several times. Now the version that is in the website is uh, 3.4 that was uh, compiled in January. Uh, last year, and we are currently working on a major revision of this database and probably with some enhanced future. As uh, Tony Shoros mentioned, this is uh, uh, a collaboration we have with Tony Shoros and Chinar Baimul, and we uh, hope that in the next future we will, have, we will be able to produce a, uh, this revised version and, and, and with these new features. So basically in WIT, we report information from Gini for different countries, the sile, quintiles, the bottom and top 5%, mean and median income, and some description of these variables. So what is the source, the concept that they are measuring is income, is uh, consumption, is uh, per capita, equivalized, etc. The coverage is for the whole population, is only for rural areas, for urban, uh, for part of the country, etc. This is a secondary uh, data, so there is no uh, micro data, so that cannot be frustrating for people uh, like me that are used to put our hands on the data. So uh, this is basically data, genes that have been reported by other sources uh, previously. So the data contains all the new uh, data sets, so these initial compilations by the World Bank, but also compilations by ECLAC, by UNICEF, Transmoney, or by the Asian Development Bank, and uh, others. Uh, we complement this data with uh, other sources like Luxembourg Income Study or SETLAC that both generously provide us with the last updates uh, for uh, the genius of the information they have, so that makes uh, a good complement to other sources. We also uh, take data from public sources like Eurostat, World Bank, OECD, uh, ECLAC, etc. Uh, we actively search for information from national statistical offices, even though unfortunately in information on inequality is not, is not as standardized as information for uh, CPI or GDP or uh, other uh, issues, so that makes difficult uh, this task. And uh, as you know, uh, some information can be reported in many different languages, and even that we are United Nations, we, don't, we are not such strong in, in some of these languages. Uh, and we also research, uh, look at the research papers, reports, etc., where we can have information. Uh, we, the WIT has played an important role in research uh, over the last uh, years. Uh, it, in terms of global inequality, as we have, uh, have seen before, uh, when you try to measure uh, the level of inequality in the whole world or in big regions like Sub-Saharan Africa or Latin America, so for example, the, paper, the uh, seminal paper from Sally Martin in the Quarterly Journal of Economics or uh, more recent research, uh, for example, done at, um, by you know why the researchers uh, uh, using the uh, the wheat recently, like a paper by uh, Nino Sarasua and, and Tarp in the Review of Income and Wealth, or Rupert others in uh, Economic Letters. But it's, it has also played an important role in other issues in which we are interested in the relationship between inequality and, for example, other issues related with the stability of a country, macro stability, like foreign direct investment or real exchange rate or institutional development 
labor regulations, uh, the impact of economic sanctions on inequality, uh, expansion of public sectors. Sometimes inequality is um, the dependent variable, sometimes it's the variable uh, that explains uh, these other issues. So, uh, also social conflict, religiosity, skill immigration. So I think there is a big range of topics for which we need data on inequality and WIT has played uh, an important role in helping to answer to those relevant questions. Of course, there is an increasing number nowadays of other databases all over the world. Uh, some of them has been built uh, largely using our WIT uh, database. There are ex anti harmonization, like probably Eurostat is the main example, uh, or the efforts of the World Bank in somehow standardizing some ways of uh, uh, how to how to capture information on income and consumption in uh, household surveys in developing countries. There have been also some important developments in exposed harmonization, probably Luxembourg income study is the best example uh, for middle income and, uh, and high income countries, or the set lag for Latin American countries, uh, that is also in collaboration with the World Bank, or the World Bank also collecting in PopCalNet, uh, information about the distribution in many countries, OECD, etc. All We take advantage of all these advances in the sense that we try to pick all this information and combine it with information we already had. And of course, there are other specialized databases like uh, the World Inequality Lab uh, data set for uh, top incomes or the credit use for uh, wealth, etc. The fact that we have different uh, sources of uh, data to analyze inequality. There is also, I mean, makes important some critical assessments of the implications of using the different data sets. And there has been some literature also uh, analyzing the flaws and the advantages of different data sets, like papers by Atkinson and Brandolini in the Journal of Economic Literature, or the special issue of the Journal Economic Inequality, edited by Chico Ferreira and Nora Lustig, or, or another paper more recently by Galbraith. In that sense, the wheat, I think, it, like other sources, it has some advantages and some uh, uh, disadvantages. So we see the wheat not as a substitute of the other sources, but as a complement. So among the flaws, of course, there is some limited information. So we provide basically the, the some, a few statistics. If you are interested in very specific statistics like uh, the Gini for gross income for uh, non elderly households like we saw before, you need more flexible tools like uh, LEAS to, that allow you to define the sample and the concept uh, more uh, in more detail. Uh, if you are interested in more standard concepts like uh, Gini for per capita income, disposable income, uh, then you will find that uh, in the weed. Of course, there is a heterogeneity of data sources uh, that make sometimes rise problems with comparability and differences in the way th the well-being concepts were uh, defined or in the methodologies used to produce them, etc. This means that our data comes with a warning alert, so use with caution. Sometimes, depending on what is the use, uh, the purpose of the research or, or, or for what reason do, uh, do you want the data, uh, you might need to pick specific observations or to try to make some harmonization of your own. Uh, on the uh, pros of our uh, database is that it's quite accessible, it's transparent, you know what you have. Uh, it's, and, it's, and especially it gives you the largest possible geographical and time coverage. So you will have the largest sets of countries and the longest periods uh, of uh, Gini that can be computed from uh, surveys or administrative data, etc. So that's somehow the, 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 the main strength of the, of the database, especially when it comes to developing countries. Uh, the challenges of this database for the future is trying to be faster probably in, in updating information. So the people don't need to wait one year or two years to have a, a new update. Uh, as now information is produced uh, in a continuous way by the, by the different sources, uh, we aim at also being able to update the database in a more continuous way. Uh, we are 
exploring uh, with Professor Shorrox and, and collaborators ways to improve some estimates that we know that can be improved with information we have when there is some missing genes, but we have information of uh, for the distribution for quantiles or the size, or when we know that the genie was computed. Uh, based on group data, and there are methodologies that maybe allow us to produce a genie that is closer to the real uh, uh, genie, or maybe correcting for top incomes, etc. Also, we plan to try to um, help users with a standardization of the data, so uh, in, in the sense that they can have series for, uh, say, per capita disposable income or for consumption uh, for many countries and for long time uh, periods uh, with some uh, adjustments to the data we have. And also to improve the information that is displayed in the website, the documentation, or some uh, visualization tools like maps or uh, graphs that, that you can directly construct with uh, the data we have. And also introduce some analysis of this uh, data to help people interested uh, uh, in these uh, topics. The new version that is still not uh, um, has not been released yet, but we are working to have an idea with about 11 observations. Of course, that means for one country and year we can have several uh, genies. Um, we try to avoid duplicates in the sense that we try to have information that we only have more observations for one country when they add something, like uh, maybe one is for consumption, another one is for disposable income, another one for gross uh, income or urban areas, etc. And tr we try to have the largest possible coverage. It's, uh, in this version, we will have, uh, at this moment, 191 countries or historical entities. So we have some information, sometimes very limited, but some information for all countries except for Libya, North Korea, or some Gulf states and some microstates and some special territories like uh, with Sahara and French Guiana. But I mean, we have some information for, for more countries all over the world. As you can see in the graph, most information comes from high or uh, middle income countries, but we we'll make a special effort in having some information for low income countries. Even if it's more limited, uh, it's also more valuable for us. Just to show that temporal coverage. We have observations from uh, uh, the 19th century, but of course that is anecdotal. Most of the information starts in the 50s and 60s, uh, but somehow covers the period for which we uh, could be more interested in analyzing uh, global inequality uh, long-term trends. Uh, we have some relevant number of observations for sub-Saharan countries that, as I mentioned, uh, jointly with MENA countries are uh, the areas that for which it's more difficult to find observations and we are also improving uh, in this case for the MENA countries. So uh, in general, I mean the main challenge of this kind of data set is that we're trying to fight this lack of uh, data putting on the table all the information we have but it comes with all this problem of uh, difficulty in comparability uh, of um, the different concepts, the different sources, etc. And we will try to make the effort, the mo I mean, all the effort we can in trying to make things um, more friendly for users, especially for non-technical users that uh, want to have information uh, that can be used without previous uh, harmonization, standardization, etc. But of course, there is this trade-off uh, that somehow I think in, in terms of inequality uh, measures, there is like a gap between the demand that is increasing very fast and the supply that cannot increase as fast as the demand because of course we cannot go back in time and make surveys in countries for which we don't have information or we cannot uh, force uh, countries to produce uh, information with if they don't do it. So it's, uh, the supply is quite limited, but I think we try to make the most of it so we can answer some of these relevant questions about inequality, the trends, and the relationship between inequality and other relevant social uh, phenomena. So thank you very much.